Well, good morning. It's good to be with you today. Appreciate you listening. I hope, Bray, this message will bring uh, peace in your life. I'm going to look at this morning about uh, your salvation. We spoke on salvation uh, maybe three weeks ago, something like that, maybe four. But, you know, a lot of people today are kind of, kind of doubt their salvation. And I want us to kind of take some tests to see about our salvation, see if you really have what you think you have. Not doubting your salvation, but being assured of what you believe so you can tell others about what you believe. 1 John 5, 13 is where we're going to start today. And then we're going to read John 20, 30 through 31. 1 John 5, 13 says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. And then John 20 tells us this, verse 30. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. Now I love that passage of scripture because I wonder what else he did that was not recorded. But he says, I've recorded these so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. Uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word that tells us that you are the Christ, you are the Son of God. And we know that you're the only way that we'll ever get to heaven is by trusting you because of what you did on Calvary. And Lord, we thank you for that right now. But Lord, I pray if there's someone uh, really not sure, I, I pray that as we take the test this morning, uh, they'll see exactly where they stand with you. For us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The thing of John's book is knowing that you're saved. Someone has well said that you can't read the, through the book of John three times without accepting Christ as your personal Savior because it's just that powerful. Many scholars believe that 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and the book of John were kind of uh, read in tandem when they were read in the early church. Uh, you know, it's important to know that you're saved, but it's really important to know in what you believe and who you believe in. Again, so you can share that with the lost and dying world you come in contact with today. You know, in our society today, we're supposed to tolerate other religions, but it seems many folks do not tolerate us as we tell the truth about the gospel of Jesus Christ, what he's done in our life. We're living in a world today where people believe truth is self-determined. Many people say there's no such thing as absolute, absolute truth. Well, again, my question is, are you absolutely sure? And certainly the truth is found in God's word. In John 3, 3, Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. And as we look at this ch uh, chapter of 1 John the fifth chapter, uh, verse 13. I think there's, uh, if you look at the whole passage, you'll see that there's probably five tests that you can t uh, take today to prove that you know Christ as your personal Savior. First of all, the truth test it says in 1 John 5, 1, everyone who believes that Jesus is Christ, is the Christ, is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. Believing that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah of God, that's what you must believe. That's what scripture tells us. We, come, we become a Christian by believing. We don't come, become a Christian by teaching. We don't become a Christian by singing. We become a Christian by believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. John wrote to counter the teachings of, of the Gnostics, uh, the mystical people that were coming in behind him. And he wrote to counter what they were saying. There are four, five important things about who Christ is. First of all, uh, the preexistence of Christ. Uh, Will read John, four, or, or, uh, John 1, 1 the other day, or referred to it, where it says, in the beginning, uh, the Word was with God. 
Someone has well said you can take out the word word and put the word Jesus. In the beginning, Jesus was God and God was with Jesus and Jesus became flesh. And certainly God and Jesus are one and they did pre-exist the creation of the world. You have to believe that. And then we have to believe that he was incarnated, that God the Son, uh, he's, God the Father was incarnated in God the Christ. Uh, of course, the Gnostics didn't believe in the incarnation. So again, uh, he had to refute what they were saying, uh, talking about the incarnation of Christ. They believe Jesus became Christ at baptism. And of course, we know Jesus was Christ at the beginning. Uh, we know that according to the Word of God. And then uh, the deity of Christ, he was the divine Messiah. He was the divine Messiah the Old Testament prophets preached about. That's exactly who he was. Then we talk about the humanity of Christ. He was God-man. He was fully God, but yet he was fully human at birth. And then the eternity of Christ. The Bible says in that passage that has come in the flesh, it teaches us the, that he existed out of the space and the times boundaries of the earth. So that's the truth test. What about the life test in 1 John 2, 29? If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him. Uh, the only way to live a righteous life is for him to live that life through us. Therefore, we, the life test will let us know if we know Christ as our personal Savior. The Bible tells us that we are saved to good works. Ephesians 2 says, For it's by grace you've been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We're to live as a Christian should and do what we preach. In other words, we need to put actions to our words if we've been saved. That's the life test that takes place. The love test in 1 John 4, 7. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. You know, I, I let people know all the time that I love them. Uh, I'm not talking about just the women. I'm talking about the men too. Uh, I was talking with Rob the other day. Every time I talk with Rob at the end of our uh, discussion, I always tell him, I love you, brother. And if, uh, if you don't believe that, you ask Rob. Rob will be glad to tell you that. But we're supposed to express love. That's the love test. Uh, then there's a progression of, of truth regarding love. In 1 John 4, 8 through 11, it says, Whoever does not love God does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Verse 7 there just simply tells us that, that love is of God. Love is of God. At verse 8, God is love. And he loved us, verse 9 and 10, by sending his son. You see, he proved that he loved us by sending his son to the earth. We have to prove to people that we love them. Words are, are cheap, aren't they? We have to do it by actions. God proved that he loved us by sending his son to die on the cross for our sins so we could have everlasting life. Because he loves us, we can love others. That's what the Word of God says. Uh, 1 John 4, 19, we love because he first loved us. Aren't you glad that he loved you first? And I'm thankful today that I can tell you that I love him for what he has done for me. And I certainly want to share the love of Christ with anyone and everyone that's ready and willing 
to listen about the love of Christ. 1 John 4.11 says, if you don't love your brother, you don't love God. Sonny sings a song. If you don't know, love your neighbor, you don't love God. You know, we, we prove we're Christian by loving the unlovable. Sometimes it's hard to love your brother and sister in Christ uh, because we, we're not perfect. Uh, we're imperfect. We have different thoughts. We have uh, different ways we sing, see things. And sometimes we get our feelings hurt. But the Bible tells us if you don't love your brother, you don't love God. Yeah, we can be disagreeable, but we still have to love our brother and sister in Christ. Then there's the growth test that takes place. 1 John 5, 4 says that for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. We know we're going, we know we're growing when we say no to the world. When we say no to the world, uh, boy, the world can't stand it. Satan can't stand it, but certainly God loves it when we say no to the world. <coughs> Excuse me. But that's what we must do if we're going to show the world that we're different, that we don't love the world. You know, as we look back, uh, we see struggles. <coughs> Excuse me. They've been cleaning and may have stirred up a little dust. But as we look back, we see struggles that we've had but we, that's, that's the, we've had. There are no more because of the love of God in our life. And certainly, uh, the growth test is a certain test that you can find out if you really love God. <coughs> Excuse me. Second Corinthians 5, 17 says this, Therefore, if anyone is Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone. The new has come. Old things are passing away. You're growing more like Christ and old things are passing away. Things you used to love to do really don't uh, even cross your mind anymore because uh, they're not of God. And then being saved doesn't mean we, we don't have struggles. You know, the older I get, the more I'm convinced uh, that overcoming the world depends on our growing love for Jesus and not focusing so much on the evils of the world. Again, I talk about it a lot, focusing on Him. If we'd focus on Him, we would have a whole lot less trouble than we have in this world today because when we focus on the world, uh, we're not growing as Christians. We have to trust God that He's in control and just love Him and get to know Him more each and every day. And that's the growth test. You know, a person born of God is focused on God and not the, not the world. And the result is overcoming the world. You know, Jesus said, I believe in John 16, 33, he says, be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. He said, in this world, you'll have troubles, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I'm telling you, if we'd focus on him, uh, our troubles would be a whole lot less than what they are. Then the last test he talks about is the sin test. 1 John 5, 18 says this, We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who was born of God keeps him safe, and the evil one cannot harm him. A born-again Christian doesn't live a lifestyle of sin. Yeah, we're going to sin, but we belong to God, and our life should demonstrate that fact that we belong to him. Uh, people have come to tell me, uh, preacher, I, I, I'm, I'm sinning. I know I'm sinning. Uh, does that mean I'm lost? No, the Bible tells us in Romans, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And certainly we all have, haven't we? But just because you sin doesn't mean that you're lost. Uh, I still sin every day. But there's a difference in sinning when you're lost and sinning when you've been born again. See, your sins have been forgiven, 
if you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you've been born again, your sins are forgiven, but that shouldn't make you want to sin more. Uh, that's what Paul said. Should we sin more so grace can abound more? No, that's not why we're saved. We're saved to become uh, more like Him, as we talked about there in the growth. We're saved to become more like Him. A person that's not sorry for their sins, now I would have to say they need to check their salvation because if you're not sorry for your sin, if you feel uh, okay about sinning, there's something wrong in your life as a child of God. I just can't see a person just continually w uh, willing to sin. Uh, and, and a, and a born-again believer just can't do that or their life will be miserable because they're out of fellowship with God. Well, we've taken five tests this morning. Uh, the faith test, we've taken the faith test, we've taken the life test, we've taken the love test, the growth test, and the sin test. You know, back when I was in school, from time to time, the teacher would say, okay, after we had taken a test, now it's your time to grade your own paper. And uh, some of the guys really enjoyed doing that because they would uh, maybe not be as truthful as they should have been. But the problem was they didn't realize that the teacher was going to go back over them. And so they, she knew who she could trust by the grading of the papers. You know, as we've taken this test today, God's telling you to grade your own paper. And listen, God's a master teacher. He knows exactly what you have and have not done. You can't fool Him. You can, you can fool people, but you'll never fool God. How are you doing in these tests that we have taken today? John has given us a test, and he says... Grade your own life. Grade your own life. Let me ask you the question today. Did you fail or pass the test? Let's pray. Father, I pray that as we've looked at your word, that we can definitely know for sure whether we passed the test. Know for sure that we've been born again. And we thank you for that assurance that you, can, that you do give us once we have been born again. Yes, we're going to stray. Yes, we're going to continue to sin, but certainly, hopefully, not willful sin. But if so, I pray that again, Lord, you'll check their salvation to make sure that they know that they have been born again. Lord, we ask you to bless this message, and I pray that uh, people will do whatever they feel led to do as they've listened to this message today. For us in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, once again, it's been great to be with you and certainly I hope and pray that this message, that you know that you've been born again. You don't have to doubt your salvation. You know that you've been born again and certainly the Bible tells us that we can, no matter what the world says. You know that you can be you know that you've been born again. And I thank God for that assurance today. Don't you? You have a blessed day. And we'll be, be, we'll be back and, and uh, of course, the message tonight. And then we'll be back to share it with you again Wednesday night as well. So, it's, again, as always, it's a blessing to be with you. And, and as always, I love to tell you I love you because I really do.